We're all looking forward to the next UFC lightweight bout between Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier on January 23rd in Fight Island. As we all know, this fight has already happened back in 2014. Although the first fight ended inside the first round in favor of McGregor, both competitors have evolved into significantly different fighters over the past six years, and it'll be very interesting to see what the result will be this time. For starters, it's true that Conor the Notorious McGregor has not been completely active between 2014 and 2020, but he's still one of the best MMA fighters in the world, and he's facing a fighter who's proven himself to be a world-class lightweight. On the other side, Dustin Poirier tasted interim gold in 2019 when he dominated Max Holloway at UFC 236 after a run which saw him defeat former champions Anthony Pettis, Eddie Alvarez, and former interim title holder Justin Gaethje. But the diamond was defeated by the current lightweight champion Khabib Nurmagomedov at UFC 242 in the Russian's penultimate fight before retiring. With Khabib retired, many wonder why the UFC doesn't make the up-and-coming rematch between Conor and Dustin a title fight. Coach Kavanaugh expressed his confusion in an interview with Oscar Willis. I don't really get why this one isn't for the title, I can ask. if I'm being 100% honest. Maybe it's staying a, this is a little carrot towards Khabib, you know, do you really want this guy there? I don't know. I know there's those type of games that go on, I don't involve myself in it. But this to me feels like it's, it's for the belt. Um, but I, I guess, at the very least, the winner of this will be offered a title fight. But who would that be against? I don't. It's, it's a bit of a strange um, scene where we have in front of us, which makes it interesting. Coach Kavanaugh was also asked about his thoughts on Dustin Poirier's evolution since the first fight. Kavanaugh fully admitted that Dustin did indeed evolve and is now a much better fighter than he was six years ago. Yeah, no, I think he's definitely gotten better. Um, you know, there's a few more takedown attempts now in his fights. Um, he, he has a, I, I, I hadn't seen it before, he has a good guillotine, we can see that. Um, and then his volume and his, his, his conditioning is, is looking on point. And you can see in his fights he has an ability to take a lot of punishment and still come forward. Um, you can pick any of his last few fights to see that see that quality. However, he's fighting a different he's fighting a different animal than any of any of those guys. Somebody with true one punch knockout power that he's already felt. What do you think about what Kavanaugh said? Should the fight between Connor and Dustin be for the UFC lightweight title? Who do you think will win? Drop your opinion in the comments section. The Ultimate Fighting Championship promotion has been around for over two decades. Something that started as an exhibition ended up evolving into a multi-billion dollar business. Thanks to the Fertitta brothers and Dana White, the UFC has been the number one MMA promotion for many years. White and the Fertittas bought the company from the original owners, which gave them the immediate task of legalizing the sport in all the different states. They also had to change the public perception of MMA, among other challenges. But since the UFC was the first promotion in MMA, White and the brothers had a big advantage. Being the first promoters has been a key factor for the UFC being on top for years. However, just like in any business, the competition didn't take long to appear. To this day, there are a few MMA promotions that are still running and competing with the UFC. PFL, One Championship, and Bellator MMA, to name a few. But of all the alternative MMA shows, Bellator MMA is without a doubt the biggest threat to the UFC. Owned by Scott Coker and backed by Viacom CBS, this promotion has been gaining a lot of attention lately since many UFC fighters that left the promotion for different reasons are now signing with Bellator. Over the past few months, Bellator MMA has been able to snatch the likes of Yoel Romero, Corey Anderson, Anthony Johnson, and other former UFC fighters. These changes did shock a lot of fans and everyone began to wonder if Bellator was on its way to endanger the UFC's number one position. However, UFC President Dana White said in an interview with TSN that he has nothing to worry about when it comes to Bellator MMA. Really, if you, if you look at Bellator, there's not much to be interested in. There's, there's, there's much better promotions all over the world that are actually dealing in up and coming talent. There's lots of great shows to watch all over the world. What White is referring to when he mentions worrying about up-and-coming talent is the fact that many believe that fighters who are done in the UFC tend to shift to Bellator. This means that the promotion is filled with fighters out of their prime instead of potential world champions. 
If you look at the business that I'm in, it's like everybody keeps asking me about these fights that are going on, whether it's the YouTube kids or these other kids and all this other stuff. There's a market for that. People want to see that. People are going to make money. There's a market for that. And it's the same thing with Bellator and those places. That's not what I do. I'm looking for the, the up and coming best fighters in the world. And I'm looking for people that I believe could possibly someday be world champions. Those are the people we're looking for. Do you think Bellator MMA is really bridging the gap between themselves and the UFC? What do you think about what Dana White said to TSN? Will the UFC continue to be the number one promotion forever? Let us know what you think in the comments section. A few moments after the heavyweight boxing match between legends Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr., YouTuber and professional boxer Jake Paul, who had just gained his second victory over former NBA player Nate Robinson, ran into current UFC middleweight champion Israel Adesanya and told him, quote, I'm your biggest fan. The two fighters met at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California, moments after the event ended, shared a brief conversation, and took some pictures together. Israel gave props to Jake for his victory, and Paul expressed his admiration for the champion. Jake left Israel with a funny joke, saying, quote, if you're the last style bender, then I'm second to last. It's Izzy! It's Izzy! It's Izzy! Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. How you feel? I'm good, bro. That was good. Good. Thank you, bro. How was I'm out here. Yeah. Sizing up. Hey, you know, Lucas Jeff, he stole the show tonight. Yeah. He did. He this stole guy, he's dead. Right I gave him, I'm telling you, you're getting bro, better, man. I'm your biggest right fan. Is your, your shot selection. That's one thing you do. And you didn't rush when you heard him. Like, you didn't bomb or anything. But yeah, respect to you, man. man. Bro, I, I broke my nose. Like, I heard. Meditating. So you were yeah. doing breathing. Shamanic breathing. Yeah, so. Pineal gland breath work. Yeah. I broke my nose, so I, had, I hadn't been able to spar. Yeah. So I, was, I felt like I wasn't as sharp. Now you look like good. My, now you were my jab man. wasn't landing. Yeah. Boxing is sparring as well. You've been working. I stopped. My man drip. <laughs> but it dripped out. Come know. on, bro. We're going hey, to Jake, come out to Calabasas. Come out party. to Calabasas. Okay. Jake, come. I'm going to chill for a bit and I'll come through. Right. Right. Can, we bring him, can we bring him to camp next time? Yeah. Is he I'm too far right? away. Yeah. We're yeah. around. We can get some work. Yeah, yeah. Is he, is yeah. he the man? He's going to go. I will. Lucas, I'll find yeah. you. Wait, I'll, Do you I'll already know? You don't, don't, let, don't let. Don't let. Yeah, yeah. I see how they. Yeah. Yeah. He's putting me on game now. I got you. Bro. No, thank you. Thank you. Got you, bro. I'm new hey, to this. I'm new to this. No, 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 no. He's he's working. Sorry. I'll do it later on. All right. Let me take a picture of you two really quick. All right. Oh man, I see. This is cool. Hey, Marcos, grab a picture of us. Yeah, yeah you, your commentary was fire. I, 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 was, I was saying, I was saying, like, I want to see how Izzy's commentary. Like, I'll be you, honest, man. I'll be you honest. were like no, said, no, no. You were, you were in your flow state. You like crushed that. Oh, you have fun too. Ah, yeah. yeah Can you get an iPhone one? iPhone. Hit him with this. Uh, yeah. Get the, get the, get the, get the iPhone. Get the iPhone. 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 Get the iPhone. iPhone. Get more games. Bruce Lee's birthday! He's 80 years old today. Okay, no worries, no worries. Alright, ready? You got an iPhone one? Yes, sir. How do you say 23, right? 23. Coming up. Yeah, bro. Alright. Hey, hey, if you're the last style vendor, I'm the second to last. Alright, keep crushing it, bro. Go, go. What do you think about this encounter? Let us know in the comments your opinion about both Izzy and Jake. UFC Rising star Marvin Vittori recently called out almost the whole UFC middleweight division during a brief interview with TMZ Sports. Marvin said that his singular goal in life is to smash Robert Whittaker and Israel Adesanya to go on and get the middleweight championship belt. TMZ interviewed Vittori right after his five-round unanimous decision win against number four ranked 185-pound fighter Jack Hermanson Saturday night in Vegas. After the match, Marvin Vittori first called out Paolo Costa, but for some reason, the Italian star obviously changed his mind and has his sights set on even bigger fish. I, I want to go after the title and, uh, and uh, if anything, fight for the number one uh, contender spot. And I think and, and if it goes away, um, fight for an interim title. And I think the most legitimate guy out there uh, like the, the number one legitimate uh, contender now, it's Robert Whitaker, 
What Vittori is referring to when he talks about Izzy running away is Israel's plans of moving up a division to fight light heavyweight champ Jan Blachowicz next year. If it happens that Marvin beats number one ranked Whitaker, surely the UFC will set up a rematch with Adesanya. The two fought in April of 2018, and some people, even a judge from the fight, felt Marvin Vittori won the fight. I, I want to be the, the, the legitimate uh, number one contender for this fucking title, and, and then I want to be uh, the one that um, dethroned that, that bullshit ass champion um, called Israel Adesanya. So let's do it, man. What do you think about Marvin Vittori's ambitions? You think he's got what it takes to dethrone current middleweight champion Israel Adesanya? Let us know your opinion in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more MMA content.